I've even had the comment told to me that, why do you study so much? It's not like once you're out in the real world, you won't be taught again. What I've learned is that school is just a waste of time and a waste of money. And, you know, I, they, they continue to say that I don't need to study now because once I'm out in the real world, I'll be taught everything that I need to. And that's not true. Okay, so I'm back and you might be wondering why I have on this hat for any of my returning subscribers. They're probably like, um, Brittany, I know you're in online school, you're at home, you have nowhere to go, why you have a hat inside? And it's because my hair looks really bad. Like you, you can see up here, it's really frizzy. It's bad. But, so we're gonna stay like this, you're just gonna see this. Um, but anyways, no, I'm sitting here, I'm about to eat lunch. Um, I actually made some pizza. Um, yeah, like I made some pizza from scratch. I also have three little chicken nuggets on the side, but that looks really sad. But here's my pizza that I made. So yeah, um, if you're new to my channel, my name is Brittany. I am a current fourth term vet student. I know it's the fall when it's getting, it's getting uploaded. So that just basically means I'm in my second semester of my second year. So January starts my third year um, at St. George's University down in the Caribbean. And so as the title of this video says, I'm gonna be talking about imposter syndrome, um, what to do, you know, when you have people in your life telling you, you know, like think of a different career plan, you know, why are you doing that? You know, just how to like overcome that. And be sure to keep up with me on social media. I post more on my Instagram now. Um, if again, like if you're one of my old subscribers, you know that like, most of my YouTubes were around, around being in Grenada. And since I'm not there, I don't upload nearly as much, um, but I've been trying to, you know, here and there. So here's the video coming to you now. What is that? First time I made it, did not come out good. My oven is like a demon and it cooked it too long. This is great. <laughs> okay, anyways, I'm gonna try to make this video like short and sweet and short to the point because I'm ready to eat my pizza. So first of all, Imposter syndrome, if you don't know what it is, is basically um, where you think of an imposter of yourself. You think that you're not good enough in my situation being in vet school. You think you're not good enough to be a vet. You think that you'll never be good enough or anything like that. Um, and it's basically like where your own thoughts and opinions of yourself beat you down. And you tell yourself, I'm not good enough. Like, I'll never be a good doctor. I'll never be a good vet. I'll never make the grades I'm supposed to blah 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 that's imposter syndrome and actually at SGU and I'm pretty sure at a lot of vet schools medical schools any type of school they have different workshops or anything like that because I know that's what SGU has so during your first week of orientation they have a whole thing about you know like how to overcome imposter syndrome and just to believe in yourself and so my recommendation for that at least is to I mean it's easier said than done to believe yourself but just think like if this is always what you wanted like at least for me I've wanted to be a vet since I was a little girl probably since I've known what a vet was when I was like three or four years old. Um, just watching my dog because he's eyeing me because I have food. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that like, no matter how hard it was, I knew that I was going to become a veterinarian. Even when I finished undergrad with literally a 2.79 GPA, I have a whole video about that. I'm still in vet school right now and I'm excelling. I'm doing much better than I ever did in undergrad. And you just have to tell yourself, you know, if this is what you want, you're gonna pass all the obstacles and overcome all the obstacles that are put in front of you to do it. And for some people, being a veterinarian might not have been what you wanted to do since you know you were fresh out the womb. Like, you know, sometimes it is a backup career. Like I've known people who wanted to play athletic sports and you know, when that doesn't work out, they go to medical school, they go to law school, they go to vet school. They, even if you don't go to professional school, you know, become an accountant, whatever. Um, and it doesn't always have to be your first idea. But at the end of the day, sometimes like you might volunteer to Humane Society with your family and find out like, wow, I really like working with the dogs. Like where else can I take this? And it's just one of those things that whenever it is in life, whether you're four years old, you're four you're 40 and you go back to school whenever you realize it as long as you say like this is what I'm going to do you do that and when you speak it into existence when you pray about it when you you know manifest it you just become confident in yourself if you wake up in the morning every day and tell yourself I'm going to be that doctor I'm going to be that vet whatever it is you want to do eventually you're going to trick yourself and well not even trick yourself but you're going to make your brain think like hey I am going to do this and so that's like my key of advice is just believing in yourself um for example last semester my favorite class was clinical pathology and 
it's the worst class I did in. Granted, it I still got a B. So to some people, they might say like, why are you complaining? You still got a B. But when everything was online and everything is open book and you look at the grade distribution and everyone in my class is getting an A, I'm thinking, for this to be my favorite class and I'm actually very interested in it, why am I not good enough? Like what's wrong with me? Like once I'm out in the field, like am I not gonna be able to read this cat's blood work that comes in? And no, they don't expect you to know everything while you're still a student. You have years of experience to get this through. You have more years as you excel up, it comes back, it repeats. You have a whole year of clinicals so that's all you're doing as you know, just going over cases, going over diagnostics to get better. I know lately I've had a lot more high school students, even middle school students reach out to me and saying, what should they be doing and everything like that. As long as you know that it's going to be hard, that's all you need to keep in mind. But those times when it gets hard, don't let that stop you, don't let it be defeated. Because again, everyone that came before you was in my shoes, was in your shoes. At some point, we all were in middle school, we were all in high school, we were all just starting undergrad and just starting our applications and we knew nothing. We didn't know anything about a dog, a cat, or a horse. And I mean, yes, you do know something. There's people who have tech experience and stuff, but even those people, you, we are all born the same. We came into this world knowing nothing. And so if some of the best renowned doctors, athletes, everything out there, um, engineers, if they can create those big things when at first they were just like an infant, so can you. So just think of it that way. Sorry, I had to take a snack break. I'm so hungry, y'all. I didn't eat breakfast this morning. And if you watched my last video, you saw that I am trying to do better about eating breakfast in the morning. I didn't eat breakfast this morning, so I'm hungry. I really hope there's nothing in my teeth because I can't see my teeth right now. I don't think so. Okay. Anyways, transitioning into this, I wouldn't call this imposter syndrome because imposter syndrome is something I fit, um, or that's defined as something like being in yourself, you thinking you're not good enough. But I was specifically asked to make a video about what happens when your family or your friends might not be supportive um, of your endeavors. And again, I never know who clicks on my videos. You might not be wanting to be a vet or you might be on the fence about being a vet or something else, but I relate everything back to being a vet because that's what I do, obviously. Um, and this is what this person did. One of the main things you hear is that vets aren't real doctors, which they are. There are some times where I really wish that people could see what I'm learning, um, even in, especially this semester, in anesthesiology and surgery. And it's not just like, your human is coming into the doctor, this is how it always is. There's different things you have to know for the horse, for the dog versus the cat, um, different types of systems for different breeds and if they're a certain weight. And of course, again, I'm not saying that people aren't different. There's different people with different ailments and different sizes and different ages. But then when you, if you wanna say that, then every animal has different sizes and different ailments and different ages. You think of the drugs and I can use this in dogs and I can't use it in cats. And people think dogs and cats are the same and they're not. Or I can use this drug, but it's gonna kill a horse, but every other animal species can use it. And it's just so many things that like, I don't think people realize that we're learning the same things as humans just in a bunch of different animals and granted my girlfriend is in medical school and some of the stuff she learns they go way more in detail but then there's things that we might not go as in detail but again we have to know the species and it's not to say that we're not learning i mean I surprise so many people when I talk about my job and I'm like, oh yeah, this diabetic cat is on insulin. And they're like, insulin? Cats get diabetes? And I'm like, yes, every animal can get diabetes or every animal can get cancer or every animal can get thyroid problems and kidney failure and can go blind and like so many different things. And people are just like, wow. And it's almost belittling sometimes when I get the comment said to me that, oh, you're, you're gonna be a veterinarian, you're gonna play with animals all day, or oh, you must, be an, uh, you must wanna be a vet because you love animals. And yes, I feel like being a vet has a lot to do with loving animals, but there are people in my class who don't wanna work with animals. And I know veterinarians who don't really care for animals because they wanna do research or they wanna do the public health aspect of it, or they um, wanna just do something that's not in a clinical setting. But also you never hear people say, oh, you wanna be a doctor because you love people. Like when you hear people wanna be a doctor, it's just like, prestige around it and it's like oh my gosh you're gonna save lives oh my gosh like you must really be smart but when you say that about a veterinarian it's just kind of like oh 
you like animals, huh? Like, and it's just like, why don't you get the same respect and the same treatment? And I'm not saying it shouldn't be fun. Your job should be fun. Um, but no one says like, oh, you want to be a doctor because you like watching Grey's Anatomy? Like no one makes it seem like a joke when it's a human doctor. And you think about when someone's in medical school and it's like, oh my gosh, they're in medical school, they're going to be a doctor. But no one says you're in veterinary school, you're going to be a doctor or you know anything like that. And it even comes, I feel like, to dentists and pharmacists. You're a doctor and some people don't really see it that way. And there's so many things that we learn in vet school that come to human public health and human medicine. Like there's so many diseases that come from animals and it's the vet's job to, you know, survey that and make sure like, did you know that you can get tuberculosis from a cow? And that's one of the required things that if, at least in the US and I'm pretty sure in the UK, is that if an animal is gonna be deemed for um, human consumption, especially if it's a ruminant, so like a cow, a sheep or a goat, they have to be screened for tuberculosis every year because even though it's a different strand of the tuberculosis bacteria, the one that animals get can cause it in humans too. And you would never think that. You think of like, oh, tuberculosis, I just don't wanna go get tuberculosis from somebody, but no, they get from animals too. And so there's a lot of things that we have to know the clinical signs of like how it might manifest in humans like do we have to know everything no because again that's what the doctor's for but we still learn it and it's like still such an importance in it but people just don't see it like that people see it as like oh you're just the person that i bring my dog to to get its shots and people don't really differentiate between the veterinarian and the vet tech it's just you're just, y'all all work with animals. And I mean, yes, some people do. There are some clients, some very rude, nasty clients that won't respect the technician because they're not the doctor. And it's like, you see both sides of the fence. It's like, yes, thank you for recognizing my degree and the time and education I put into it. But also at the same time, techs are just as knowledgeable sometimes, I wouldn't say all the time, but sometimes, but it's just the respect. And so, I mean, for any of y'all that might be out there in that situation, I just say like, you know, prove them wrong. Show them what you're gonna do, show them what you become. It's really frustrating, I feel like, the most when your family especially doesn't recognize what you're going through. Cause I feel like your family should be your backbone, should be your support. And when they don't respect what you do and they don't see it, it's like, how do you expect the rest of the world? Um, and again, I just try to explain it to some people. I try to say like, look, if you can get it nine times out of 10, they can get it too. Um, if you wouldn't do this to yourself or your baby, don't do it to them. You know, we've I've seen people wipe their animals down in Clorox wipe. Would you wipe yourself down in Clorox wipes? Like, yes, you might wash your hands, but like say your six month old baby vomited on itself. Would you wipe it off of Clorox wipes? No, you'd probably go get a baby wipe or a paper towel. So do the same with your dog. Like, it's just things like that. Like, why would you do it? Um, and I feel like some people just don't recognize that like the importance and I mean it goes I have people in my family and I'm not gonna say their names but I have people that like when I try to you know talk about what I do in school or what I'm learning they try to come back and say like oh well, it's not that big of a deal or like oh yeah I learned that too and I'm like no you did it your biology your intro level biology class that you took in um, undergrad is not the same as the amount of information or the depth of the content that I am learning in a doctorate level degree program. So it's very frustrating because it's just kind of like, it's like almost like you're making fun of my degree. You're making fun of my education. And if someone else on the street makes fun of it, you don't even respect it. So you're not even gonna defend me as your family member. And it's just very frustrating um, when you look to your family to be your backbone and support. Um, and sometimes like you can't, like, I don't believe in the saying that blood is thicker than water because I don't believe that it always is. Like, do I believe that some family units are strong? Yes, I do. But do I believe that family always has your back? No, I don't. They don't always have your best interest. And all I can do is just say like, yes, your family might be trying to guide you in the right direction, but being a veterinarian is not dealing drugs on the side of the road. Like this is an actual prestige, very, um, you have to go eight years of school for this, it's worth it. So if someone tries to say like, oh, go be a human doctor, oh, like go do something else. Like, no, if this is what you wanna do, go do it, follow your dreams because you can be successful in it. And a lot of people complain nowadays about the loans that come with vet school. And honestly, I believe that just like anything else, if you put the time and the work into it, you'll get it. I feel like our generation, like my generation is so um, pressed on getting rich quick. They wanna have nice things in life you know, in their 20s and that's just not how it works. You have to build wealth, you have to acquire wealth and you have to build it um, and it takes time. But when you have people in your life and your ear and your face just trying to put them down, like just, just turn away, find the people in your life that do support you because that's what I've learned that I've had to do. I've literally had someone in my family um, tell me 
which um, the video is up where I did a dental on a cat. And I was showing them at home, you know, just like, ah, look, like what I got to do at work today. I was so excited. It was the first dental I had ever done. And they were like, wow, they actually let you like practice on that, on a cat? And I was like, what do you mean practice? And they were like, well, you're like cleaning its teeth. Like they need their teeth clean. And I'm like, yes, they get all types of diseases and crap just like you do. And they were just like, but they like let you practice. Like there was nothing fake to practice on. And I'm like, I work at a job. I work at a facility that pays me. We see paying clients with their pets. I'm being trained for something that I have to do in the real world one day. Why would my job have a fake cat for me to practice on? And they were just like, wow, I just like, can't believe like you're doing that. Like, but it wasn't like in an encouraging way. It was like in a condescending way. And it's just kind of like, huh, yeah, like really? And I mean, like I could go on and on about the comments I've had, even in my family, you know, I like show them things and it's just like, oh yeah, well, I learned that in biology or oh yeah, like back in the day when I did X, Y, and Z, I did something similar to that. And I'm like, it's not the same. And I've even had the comment told to me that, why do you study so much? It's not like once you're out in the real world, you won't be taught again. What I've learned is that school is just a waste of time and a waste of money. And you know, I, they, they continue to say that I don't need to study now because once I'm out in the real world, I'll be taught everything that I need to. And that's not true. Let me tell you why it's not true because now I'm going to come out of school as a veterinarian and who's going to teach me? If I go apply to a job as a veterinarian, yes, I might have a mentor, but they expect that that four years of school on a doctorate level that you just went through just taught you everything you needed to know. So why are you coming into this establishment not knowing anything? And so it's things like that, comments like that, you just got to put behind you, even if you have to kind of smile and laugh it off and you know where you're trying to go, you know what you're trying to do in your life and what they have to say, you just got to put it out the window. And you can't always cut your family off. You can't always be rude. You can't always talk back. But you can politely say no. You can politely like disagree. Um, you can disagree or you can disagree to agree or agree to disagree. You know, like that. Yes, agree to disagree. And you just have to keep it moving because no, like if this is what you want to do, do it. I can see that this video is getting long, so I'm going to end this here. Plus, my pizza's getting cold. So anyways, I hope that this has been helpful. It ended up being a little longer than I anticipated and I am so sorry about that. Like, it's just certain things like this when I get to talking about it, I'm really passionate because I myself have been like torn down in the past indirectly. Um, you know, people tease me about like wanting to work with animals all day and you know, they stink and they bite and you wanna do this, but then also at the same time, I've been degraded and like, you know, my career has been like kind of like just put down like, oh, you just play with puppies and kittens all day. Like, ah, how, how hard is that? Like, I went to a real job today. What did you do? I'm sorry. I stood on my feet for 11 to 12 hours today, you know, wrangling large dogs and getting bit up and scratched by cats. <laughs> like, no, but no. So if you have any questions, if you need any encouragement, if you want to mentor, if you're in high school or, you know, even I'd say middle school, middle school, you still have a long way to go, but high school, undergrad, you just need somebody to talk to. Like never feel bad to reach out to me. I always respond to my comments. I always respond on Instagram. Again, follow me on there. Like that is the best way to reach me because I check there like every day, multiple times a day. Um, and if you want another video like this where I just give my opinions, I talk about something, I try to get to it again when I have my free time. Midterms time should be good because I'll have some gaps in that week. But until then, be safe, be awesome, stay safe out here with COVID and wear your mask and don't infect other people. And until next time.